I ordered a few N64 bootlegs from AliExpress to check compatibility with our Joey Jr. cart flasher. One of the most interesting was this multi-cart, and in this video we're going to see if we can reverse engineer it, find out how it works, and if we can replace the ROMs in it. There are likely a few ways to try reverse engineer this cart. I've never really worked with a 64 CPU instruction set, so I wanted to leave that as a last resort. So I started off just looking for plain text in the ROM itself. So I'll quick search for Mario. Found the plain text uh, entries pretty quickly. They look to be 40 bytes across, so you can add as many as you want or modify them. But there's plenty of room down below for hundreds of ROMs. On top of the 18 ROMs on the card already, there has to be 18 sets of uh, data that's written to the mapper to select a ROM, so to move Mario Brothers into the bootable area it needs to relocate it. So after searching through the ROM a little more we ended up finding further down a table of um, bytes. And looking at them there were 72 bytes um, divided into 18 games was 4 bytes per game. And to test this we went across to the uh, what is it, one, two, three, fourth game which is 1942 and we type this code directly into um, the mapper itself so we put 02 and 08 when we send this to the um, cart we found that the ROM has been updated so the 64 um, would interpret this cart as Neon 64 which is an S emulator which is what's running this uh, 1942 game so we found our table of um, mapper rights and we found our plain text table so we can add as many games as we want using this method. We still need to find out what these bytes actually do and how they relate to the structure of the flash itself. So to do that we just played around with these values and um, we quickly got an understanding of what is going on. Basically the first byte here is a megabyte offset in the main 128 megabyte flash. So by putting 2 here, we relocate whatever's at um, 2 megabytes and below in the cart. It relocates it back up to 0000, which is what the 64 boots from. So that's fairly simple. And the second byte here is to lock the mapper. So you don't want a game trying to write to SRAM and fiddling with these numbers while it's running, because it'll jump to a different game mid-game and ultimately crash the program. So by writing 08 here, uh, that locks the mapper until... Uh, our next restart which will unlock it. Next up uh, we had to find out where the hard code limit was for the maximum number of ROMs. So on the menu you could select up to the 18th ROM and no further. So we figured we'll just find 18 in the ROM code itself which would be 1, 2 in hex. So we had to search for hex value 0012 and that's not it. Um, we found a few instances um, in the actual ROM menu itself before the game code and none of them seem to affect the limit. If we change these values to 12, say to 13, it instead um, messed with the menu, we couldn't navigate backwards or it would be glitching the graphics, something else was going on. So that clearly wasn't the way forward. We had to use disassembly. After spending about an hour in this app, um, we found a few if statements in the main menu navigation um, function. Basically, if page equals 2, uh, the maximum line count on that page equals 2. The memory addresses in this um, that are displayed here don't align with what's on the cart itself. The 64 seems to copy from the cart to its own memory and then run the code from there. So all these addresses are not quite right, but the opcodes are. So for example, looking for this, um, this is the value 2 that it compares against, page 2. So if we were to search for 24010002 in our ROM, we found a few instances, and we just checked the byte before it, which was uh, 18F0, just to confirm, 18F0. So by changing this byte, this will change the number of pages and then changing the following uh, this one here which is a little bit further down this one here is how many lines down per page so if we had one of four pages we could set this to four and if we wanted say 
six on that page we could set that to six so if you wanted 50 ROMs in your in your ROM list you would um, oh what would we put seven I think seven yep so six eight to 48 so we would put um, six here in this one and two here which would be 48 plus two is 50 might be a bit confusing now, it was for me, so I'll write a bit of a cheat sheet and put it up in the Discord if you're going to try to do this at home. So now we know how to um, add ROMs to our ROM table, we know how to update the mapper table to write the new codes. Um, we're just about done, the only thing we couldn't do is once we write to the mapper, um, we couldn't write to it again, it was locked. And the 64 doesn't have this issue. If you hit reset, it'll unlock the mapper. So there's something the 64 was doing that we couldn't do. And we tried a few things. We tried the cold reset signal on the cart bus. That didn't help. We tried replicating what the 64 reads and writes to on the cart at its normal boot. And that didn't help. We ended up going to the uh, N64 dev discord. And they suggested try the NMI signal, the non-maskable interrupt. And sure enough, uh, I asserted that low and it reset the mapper so we could write to it again. So that's about it for um, adding your own ROMs to this. We can already flash the cart using our Joey Junior 64, so that was fine. And um, we're going to try and make a JavaScript app to automatically do it for you. So you just drag your ROMs across and it will place them um, at the best place for it. I think that covers just about everything. Thanks for watching.